Now, New York's number one news, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. New details on the JetBlue flight scare at JFK Airport. Hear what caused smoke to fill a cabin and prompt an emergency evacuation. Plus, the treacherous winter storm leaving more than three dozen people dead and thousands of homes without power tonight. The latest alert for drivers in our area where the roads are still dangerous. Good evening, I'm Morgan Norwood. Thank you for joining us on this Christmas Day. Oh, look, a little relief could be on the way as temperatures rise. We want to get a Christmas look or get a look at your Christmas AccuWeather forecast. Here's meteorologist Brittany Bell. Brittany, any chance we're going to thaw out here pretty soon? Oh, we will, and we just have to be patient. So we have to wait a few days, but today we were well below average. We had a high of 23. Keep in mind the average high for this time of the year. That's 42 degrees. This is the coldest Christmas since the year 2000. It feels like 15 because it's very breezy. A closer look at highs all across the board. Once again, 28 degrees in Central Park, 29 in Belmar, Newark. You got above uh, the 20s, 30 degrees and 27 in Newburgh. We inch into the 30s tomorrow. So currently numbers still mainly in the 20s across most of the region. Melrose 24, Fort Wadsworth 21, zooming out down to 12 in Monticello and 23 in Newark. So it's still breezy. We have winds mainly out of the west northwest up to 20 to 25 miles per hour. These are gust and it's going to stay blustery throughout the rest of the overnight hours. But notice tomorrow morning those gusts drop dramatically and it's not going to be as windy on Monday, making it feel a little bit better. Currently skies are mainly clear and more of the same all across the northeast. Zooming out, you can see high pressure settled well out to the south. That's why things are quiet in the southeast. But I am watching this area of snow and rain now pushing through St. Louis and Chicago. That will not be an issue for us. Also, snow continues to fall, unfortunately, near Buffalo, just adding to those already very high totals. So tomorrow, not as windy. We will, though, have a chance for a few flakes late Monday night into early Tuesday. That's all thanks to a disturbance that will quickly swing in most of that north and west of the city. On Wednesday, closer to normal. And Thursday, even milder, with highs inching near 50 degrees. Most of us actually reach the 50s as we bring in the new year. So throughout the rest of the evening, clear sky heading into Monday afternoon. Clouds will increase and notice we could see a few flakes Monday night into very early Tuesday morning. Tuesday afternoon, we'll see a lot of sunshine. So tonight, 18 degrees, cold and brisk and clear. Tomorrow, not as harsh. Clouds increase 31 degrees, so getting closer to the freezing mark. And then tomorrow night, 26 degrees, mostly cloudy with a few flurries. Looking at the rest of your seven-day forecast by Wednesday, a milder blend, 42. Thursday, 48 degrees above average and that warming trend continues into Friday, 51 degrees on Saturday, 54. Unfortunately, as we ring in the new, the new year, we could have a chance for some showers late Saturday night throughout the day on Sunday. But look at highs on Sunday near 56 degrees. Morgan, we'll take it, Brittany. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, across the country. 39 people have died as dangerous winter storm uh, continues its relentless assault. 17 of those deaths right here in New York State. Tonight, Governor Kathy Hochul is urging people in the hardest hit areas to remain cautious on the roads. Here's Eyewitness News reporter Josh Eininger. For anyone who complained about the cold in New York City this holiday weekend, this is what other New Yorkers were dealing with. In the Buffalo area, it was like a hurricane of snow. There is substantial, significant, and devastating loss of life as a result of this winter storm. This evening, state leaders gave an update on what they're calling the storm of a lifetime, a widespread disaster across Erie County in western New York, where countless people have been stranded in their homes, some without power or heat, for as long as 56 hours. On the roads, cars, trucks, even snow plows are stuck, and at the storm's peak, first responders were powerless to help. During the first time in the history of the Buffalo Fire Department, the Buffalo Fire historian said they could not respond to calls because it was so bad. For those of you who don't understand what it was like, think about looking just a few feet in front of you at a sheet of white for more than 24 hours in a row. Buffalo bore the brunt of this storm with more than two feet of snow, but the Arctic assault encased much of the country in ice, with impassable roads stranding thousands and leading to deadly pileups like this in Ohio. For many Americans, it was a Christmas to remember.
Look at these numbers. Some of the coldest Christmas days on record for Charlotte, Atlanta, and Memphis. Back in Buffalo, 7,000 line crews had been pre-positioned to deal with power problems, but the roads have been too treacherous. The winds still too strong for them to get to work. So tens of thousands are still in the dark and the cold with another round of lake effect snow on the way. Josh Einiger, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. A raging fire broke out at a home in Bayside, Queens this afternoon. Citizen app video shows flames shooting out of the top floor of the home on 43rd Avenue at 215th Street. It took firefighters around 90 minutes, just over an hour and a half, to bring the fire under control. Thankfully, no injuries were reported, but the cause of that fire is under investigation. Now to the search for a gunman and a shooting that police say injured one person in Jamaica, Queens. A 24 year old man was shot in the leg inside Gourmet Deli and Grill on Guy Brewer Boulevard at 107th Avenue. He was rushed to Jamaica Hospital and is expected to survive. That gunman, though, has not been caught. And new details on the flight into JFK that ended with smoke in the cabin and several passengers injured. The FAA now says the source of the trouble was a phone charger, not a laptop. As initially reported, passengers evacuated the plane using one of the chutes last night after the pilot had already pulled up to Terminal 5. And tonight we're hearing new audio from air traffic control. We have a report of a possible fire at gate 29. Do you see anything over there? I see people, it looks like they're doing an evacuation. That is correct, sir. All right, we'll let you know what's around. Yeah, they're, they're, they're jumping off the wing right now. Now, of the 167 people on board, five were injured. That flight originated in Barbados. Well, it is Christmas Day, and people across the globe are in the holiday spirit. ABC's Inez de la Cutera checks out how Christmas is being celebrated around the world. From the winter wonderlands in London, the extravagant light shows in the Philippines, to these dazzling displays in Colombia, which rings in the Christmas season with the day of little candles, lighting countless rows of them, it's Christmas. In France, it's all about the food. And for Christmas, they roll out their so-called bouche de Noël, also known as Yule log cake. We went to the famed Paris cooking school, Le Cordon Bleu, that trained legendary chef Julia Child. I'm Julia Child. To learn how to make one. Today we're going to make chocolate cake. The secret? Making sure every layer is perfectly even. So it's, it's a cake that is done to, to be shared with the family. So it's a little bit in the Christmas spirit. Mm -hmm. And then there's also these beautiful Christmas markets. This one here right in the heart of Paris. The Louvre Museum is down there. This is how Parisians get in the Christmas spirit. With chestnuts roasting on an open fire, melted cheese, and an array of French delicacies, even Santa had to stop by. Elsewhere across Europe, we take a look at Christmas from above, as seen in this Nat Geo series, now available on YouTube. In Estonia's capital city of Tallinn, holiday revelers perform traditional folk dances around the Christmas market tree. While deep in the Arctic Circle, a region of Lapland, Finland, claiming to be the original home of Santa Claus with its very own Santa village. And for the Grinches who don't believe in Santa, some undeniable Christmas magic, those breathtaking northern lights. Nezla Katera, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Christmas magic all across the world. Well, despite the bitter cold temperatures, a line stretched around the block for a Christmas giveaway at PS 197 in Harlem. This afternoon uh, happened this afternoon, and this is the 11th year that the business owner and real estate broker Michelle Smalls, who calls herself the queen of Harlem, has taken on the role of Santa for struggling families. And there are so many families, of course, going through some hard times right now. Children could pick out brand new toys, a warm coat, sneakers, or or a bike, all generously donated by members of the community. Something so small as a coat, you wouldn't realize how big it is to somebody else. So, I mean, this Christmas, take care of somebody else. It makes me happy to see other kids smile. Why? Because everyone should be happy in life. So true. So Swall says that as a child, her family couldn't afford a lot of Christmas gifts. So as an adult, she's using her success to bring some Christmas cheer to other families going through hard times. Love to see it. 
it's not just Christmas and a rare coincidence. It's also the last night of Hanukkah. So that means all of the candles were lit on menorahs, including the world's largest one at the southern southern end of Central Park. The Israeli ambassador to the US took part in tonight's lighting, which involved getting on a cherry picker because the menorah get this 36 feet high. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Morgan Norwood. Merry Christmas and good night.